Hey everybody, this is Jeremy Siskin. I am the author of the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series and playing solo jazz piano. And as you can see, I am not alone today. And I'm actually really excited about this. Um, I'm here with a, a dear friend and a great pianist, Alex Brown, who has been um, the pianist for Paquito de Rivera for the past 16 years now. I'm a professor at Peabody School of Music and Frost School of Music at Miami. Um, and pretty recently released a great CD called The Dark Fire Sessions. Um, and I look to Alex as somebody who I think can tell me what I'm missing about Montunos, because uh, Alex has really been doing it for a long time. In fact, I don't know if you remember, I saw you play when you were still in high school, and I remember you were already crushing the Montunos when you were in high school. Um, so Alex, thank you for, uh, for joining me here. Jeremy, thanks so much for having me. It's so great to see you. It's so great to be here on your channel, which I've learned so much from watching your videos. So it's awesome to be here today. Ah, I paid you to say that. <laughs> That's so, true. Now, I, I asked you to watch my video about faking, <laughs> pretending to play Montunos. And you said that like in terms of note choice and like harmony, I'm pretty much on track. But you thought it would be good to talk about rhythmically um, I kind of struggled, actually. I, I kind of have a, somewhat of an instinct, like in terms of what to do rhythmically, but I wouldn't really be able to coach somebody um, in terms of, you know, how to rhythmically form a Montuno. So maybe you can start there. And what should we be thinking about if we're playing a Montuno um, in terms of rhythm? Sure. So at its most basic level, one thing that we really have to understand with Afro-Cuban music is the clave, which means like key or code. So the clave is a percussive instrument, two wooden sticks, I guess, that you put it kind of like this. And the clave rhythm is what I'm referring to. It's played by that instrument. There are a few different variations of the clave rhythm in Cuban music. Uh, one of them is called, so there's something called three, two or two, three. And what that means is I'm explaining this based on my perspective as a musician uh, trained in, in Western music theory and that kind of thing. I don't necessarily know that a folkloric Cuban musician would think about it the same way that I do, but this is just the way that I think about it. So Jeremy has nicely notated it for us. That's a two, three son clave. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, and three, four. So the what does other version translate to is it just like sound or do you know? It's you know I don't actually know the uh, what the word means. I know sonido is sound, of course, or uh -huh. maybe it's sonida. I'm not great with Spanish, but uh, it's a it's a folkloric rhythm from Cuba, son and son montuno, which uh, is what salsa music comes out of. Uh, so the opposite of that, so that's two three. If if you notice, there are two bar, two two notes or two rhythms in the first bar and three in the second. So if we flip it around, and have it the reverse, ba 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 ba, then we're we're starting with the three side of the clave. So we call it three two. Now it's really like a big circle. And if you listen to salsa music recordings from like the 70s, 60s, and 70s, some of the fania stuff, people like Eddie Palmieri, Ray Barreto, some of the recordings you'll actually hear that it might start off on the three side, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, ba -da -ba -ba -ba, and then there's an odd bar, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. one, two, three, and ba -ba. now we're on the two, three side, and they'll actually add a bar of a, a group of five measures um, because they wouldn't just flip the clave all of a sudden. Mm. And we can kind of think of that like the clave police. That's something, that's one of the first things I got in trouble for when I was just learning this music is I was mixing up the 3-2 and the 2-3 Montunos. Can, can I ask before we go on, um, yeah. is the 3-2 also, is this a son clave as well or the 2-3 specifically is son clave? Either way can be son or what okay. we call rumba clave. So with the rumba clave, it's like for the, in the, in the three side, instead of having it land right on four, we would actually be on the end of four. So it'd be like, ba, 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 ba. Okay, so, so that's kind of like three, two, Roomba clock. Yeah, yeah, that comes out of more, um, uh, it's a different folkloric tradition. I'm certainly no expert in this at all, but one example of that is Wawanko. It's a rhythm, it's like, 
嘎嗯嗯，滚滚滚，嘎嘎嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯，嘎嘎嗯嗯嗯嗯嗯。Did I just hit that right here? Yeah, that's fine. That works. I would just, or you could just put a rest on the second bar. Right, because it, yeah, it sounds like the grouping. It, it's kind of like weird to me because it sounds like the grouping is kind of a two dot dot uh dot. Like the grouping is two three, but the rhythm is three two. Is that does that make sense? Well, you could have it the opposite way too. So just like the first example you drew, it would be ba 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 ba. And to be honest, that's more of what we hear now in modern salsa than the son clave. I I, I tend to hear that. More again, I don't want to act like I'm an authority on this. I'm someone who has kind of listened to a fair amount of this stuff, but certainly I don't feel like I'm an expert by any means. I just try my best to fit in in a musical way and listen as much as I can、uh, to not make a complete fool of myself when <laughs> I try to play it. Well, you know more than me. <laughs> I feel very confident saying that. And th isn't there a version of the clave where? Am, am I totally crazy? Where it's like, dot, uh, 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 like where the where the two is not two three, but it's it's on the offbeat, or am I wrong? We could kind of call that a clave. I mean, that's、okay. kind of like a lot of New Orleans kind of music comes from, like second line kind of thing.、Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes you hear about a Brazilian clave, but there's not really a, a clave in Brazilian music, at least from my understanding. Right. And I don't think the rules are so strict in terms of not breaking the clave direction.、Um, can, uh, there's a music from Uruguay called candombe that uses like a three, two, son clave. Ba 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 ba. But getting off subject here. <laughs> okay, so so this is awesome, and I'm so glad we're doing this because I have told students like about these claves. I know about them. I can generally name them. If you put a gun to my head and we're like, explain how you get from a clave to actually forming rhythms, like I could have a general explanation of like, well, you want to kind of accent the notes of the clave or like, you know, kind of build things off of the clave. But my monteur knows, like, I can't actually. If I'm being completely honest, if you put a recording in front of me and we're like, "Tell me whether this is two three or three two," I'd be like, "Oh, <laughs> I'm not really like it's not obvious to me,、um, and it's not obvious to me how everything fits together." So maybe maybe you can help me、uh, like describe how I would form a two three montuno versus a three two and how they'd feel different. Definitely. Is that where we're going with this? <laughs> Absolutely. And before we do that, just one other thing. I know we、yes. don't want to get too in the weeds with all the stuff today. No,、um, oh, please. But there's another really important rhythm, percussive rhythm, that's played by the timbales, often on the sides of the shells. So we call it the cascara rhythm because that means the side of the shell. I think it's a coffee term too, and、uh, like the shell of the coffee bean or something. But anyway, cascara. So the cascara rhythm is going to fit with one of these claves as well. And I spent a lot of time when I was really getting, starting to really get interested in this music. It took me a long time to really hear which side of the clave stuff was on too, and that's why I was mixing it up so much at the beginning. And often the actual clave rhythm isn't necessarily being played; it's just implied by all the other rhythms around it.、Mm -hmm. So that's something that makes it challenging. But if you listen to for this rhythm, da 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 da. So it really follows right along with the, actually with the rumba clave. But traditionally in salsa, you'll hear them playing that cascara rhythm with the son clave. Sometimes the timbali player would even play the cascara rhythm in the right hand. If, I'm sorry. <laughs> da 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 da. One one thing off in the second bar. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Three and four and yeah, exactly. So. That that's the three version, right? So that goes along with the three-two clave, and a really good rhythmic independence exercise is to practice tapping the cascara in one hand while tapping the clave in the other hand, which is what a timbali player is gonna do. So, or with the son. And then if we start on the two side, it sounds like this.
So that's the Koskara rhythm. And that's really important for hearing, you know, this, this really relates to what we're playing as a pianist. And I even use that rhythm a lot when I'm comping, because often when I'm playing, quote, Latin jazz, you know, this is a lesson I actually learned in high school, senior year. I was very lucky to have the great flutist Dave Valentin was one of my early mentors. And he told me, you don't play, you don't have to play a Montuno all the time. We're not playing salsa. We're still playing jazz. But mm. understanding these rhythms is fundamental for your comping. And you can use that cascara kind of, you know. <laughs> and when you hear guys that really, or girls, I just mean that encompassing all genders, when you hear people playing that, uh, playing this music and improvising and they really understand it versus rhythmically versus someone who's just kind of playing bebop licks on top of it, you'll hear that they really have that in the way that they phrase a melody, the way they phrase their improvisation, that rhythm is apparent in there. Do, do I have all this right? I just want to make sure I'm not writing it on the da, wrong da, thing. Da, 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 da. Yep. Da, and and da, this da, is the way that it fits da, with the da, clave, da, da, da. right? Exactly. So that's a good first exercise. Put on, uh, there's a great Ray Barreto record called Indestructible. I love that record. And just put that on and see if you can clap the clave along or clap the cascara along. But, um, and okay. So yeah. how would, where would I expect to hear this cascara on the band? You said maybe like referenced in the piano comping. Would it be in a symbol of the drums or like? Because I'm, I'm still even thinking, okay, if I put on this Ray Barreto album and I'm not sure whether it's a 2-3 clave, you know, assuming there's nobody like hitting claves, uh, like where, what's the best, quickest, most direct, most obvious place to figure that out? So that's the uh, rhythm that the timbali player is going to be playing at the exposition, you could say, of the tune or during the, during the, during the verse. So in salsa, we, we have a, usually a couple of verses. Sometimes there's a little short interlude or something. And then instead of a chorus, we have what we call the coro, which is basically generally a montuno. So that's when you get to the part that's over this one or a set of chord changes. And we can kind of do an example of that in a second. But anyway, at that point, the timbali player, the timbalero will generally go into a different rhythm, which also kind of gives away which side of the clave is, but maybe we'll leave that for another video we don't want to overwhelm you here <laughs> okay but, so uh, the timbales are probably playing this cascara rhythm and that literally word means it refers to the shell the of shell the timbale which is where they often play it although they sometimes will play it on a cowbell okay and like and so like anything I'm, else yeah okay so as i'm comping if, if i can just try something here and get your feedback um you know i could try to comp this exact rhythm, but it's probably going to be too much, but like as a place to start. So, right. So that's a that's good, pro probably I'd want to just hit little points in the rhythm rather than it's going to be too much to play every single one of those chords. It's exactly. And if okay. you listen to a timbalero play it, you'll hear that they accent certain parts of that pattern. Sometimes, in fact, they'll even kind of leave the other notes out entirely or ghost them. So they might go da, 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 da. If we're playing a tumbao in the left hand, which mm -hmm. is kind of the type of figure that a bassist would play, or it's based on the conga pattern as well. Now that's kind of just using the accents, but if I played the whole cascara in my right hand. But it's like if we're playing jazz, right? You're not going to, you know, let's say that it's kind of yeah, based yeah. on ding, ding, a ding, ding, a ding, ding, a ding. Or of course, a lot of other things. We're not going to go. <laughs> but we understand that. And then we can play other rhythms that kind of lock into what is happening. So maybe we go. So 
it's the same thing with really any kind of music. Once you understand the language of what's happening, I'm not saying you have to actually play that rhythm the entire time. That would be really boring. But I could go. You know, we're using all kinds of different rhythmic devices, but it's all kind of really based around having that fundamental rhythm in there and kind of feeling it, you know? Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, and I, I'm noticing some things that you're doing that are already making your comping sound more sophisticated than mine. You know, like you're sometimes just playing the thumb of the chord or you're dividing it in between hands. So. I, I don't know this rhythm well enough to, to fake it. Um, but, um, you know, you're getting all these kind of interesting levels of accents and like you're, you know, it, it feels more percussive than just dot, 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 right? It feels much more speech-like. Sure. Um, okay, this is super interesting. I could probably talk to you about this rhythm for a long time, but let's make <laughs> sure we, we get to Montuno since that's yes. the point of our, <laughs> our discussion. Um, okay, so get me from Cascara Clave to Montuno's. Okay, so if you watch Jeremy's other video, which I'm sure he'll link to or something, sure. you'll get a really good fundamental understanding of, I think you were doing like a 2-3 sewn kind of, or just a 2-3 kind of Montuno because you started right on the downbeat. So, yeah. and I'm, there's kind of a secret for the rhythm of the Montuno and the clave. Of course, this is just the most basic kind of Montuno. It's more common in like, again, some of that salsa, you know, uh, from the, I guess, 60s and 70s. In, in the 80s, there was this, uh, you know, music in, in Cuba, salsa, we kind of went in a whole new direction with Sango and Timba and all these bands, and they took Montunos to this crazy level. Um, maybe we'll touch on that a tiny bit. But anyway, so when I was younger, like I was saying, I was confusing the two basic rhythms because I didn't realize that they had to fit in clave and I'd heard them a million times. So I kind of, I was playing what I heard, but I didn't realize it had to fit into one of these rhythms. And actually I can thank Oscar Stegnaro, who was a, one of my greatest mentors. I learned so much about Latin American music from him as well as Mark Walker. The two of them I met when I was a sophomore in a college in Boston. And I was taking Oscar's Afro-Cuban or Latin jazz ensemble at NEC, New England Conservatory, and I was mixing up the Montunos. And he said, he said, no, three, two is da, do, da, do, da, da, do, da, da, do, da, do, da, da, do, da. And two, three is one. I'll count it off so you know where I'm starting. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. Da 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 So they're not exactly the same, to be honest. If you just played a two three montuno in reverse, like how we flipped the rhythm over a, you know, it's 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 going to sound a little weird. And the reason is because when we're playing in three two, we anticipate. But there is one kind of general rule. I have to think about this. If you see it written down, you'll see that the when you're on the two side of the clave, the piano starts on the downbeat. So one, two, three, four, da, do, da, do, da. And then on the three side, we're going to be mostly off beats. Da, do, da, do, da, do, da, do, da, da. See how it lands again? I, know, I realize this kind is of. a lot. <laughs> uh, so 3-2 is mostly offbeats. I think it'd be helpful if, if uh, you broke it down and let me try to notate. So is this similar to the Cascara rhythm? Or um, I guess I, I kind of lost lost the train on how this is related to the Cascara rhythm. It's it's just a piece of the puzzle that fits along <laughs> right. with it. Fair, fair so, enough. And the Cascara might be the only real guide we have to know which side of the clave we're on. But if we take the same chord progression and the basic Montuno from your other video, mm -hmm. right? So if we're, we're kind of, we're doing a bar of C minor to a bar of G, right? Is so that what are we doing two, three now? Yeah. 
Okay. So I'm gonna play a basic three, uh, two, three Montuno, one bar of C minor, and this is I think pretty much what you played in your video. And in my left hand, I'm gonna play a tumbao rhythm. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> Now this time I'm not going to play the bass, but I'm going to tap the clave with my left hand, so you can hear how it fits with it. Okay. Um, let's let's slow down a second. Okay. I just want to I just want to get this much going. Uh, so can, can you play it the way that you just played it again? I'm, I'm going to try to notate it here. Absolutely. Uh, so I'll do it slowly. And this was pretty much I think where you started on your video and. I'm kind of yeah, skipping sounds, some the, of this. The first, the first part sounds the same. The second bar, I think you got some more syncopation in there. Yeah, I know in yours you played this rhythm. Yeah, yeah, that sounds like me. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I hear that words. sometimes. I think this is what I think what I played is maybe more stylistically okay. what you hear, but I, I don't, I don't want to say that for sure. I think maybe no, there's some Latin. Better. Mine, mine sounds a little square at the end. So get, give it to me one more time the way that you the way that you did it. Right. So one, a two, a one, two, three, four. you're not used to it it is a really difficult rhythm to get in the bass for westerners um, because it doesn't hit one um, so for for instance we would not play on beat one and although play. fun fact sometimes yeah. that's a clue of what side of the clave is uh we're on because sometimes on the two side the bass player would go boom 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 not necessarily, but that's one rhythmic variation I've heard that sometimes, oh, that's where we are, you know? Are these, um, that, that's probably a little advanced for me at this point. I'm just hanging on. Um, are these okay notes? Don't, boom, boom, da, don't. Does that look yeah, okay for the tempo? that works. Okay. All right. So then you are starting to explain how it fits in with the Cascara and the, the uh, Montuno. So this is 2-3. Kind of a typical 2-3 Montuno. Yes. Okay. Lay it on me. <laughs> well, the Cascara, that really is just a figure that would be probably being played while we're playing this, at least if we're at the, at the verse part of the song, right? So okay. if I'm playing with a band and I don't know what kind of Montuno I'm supposed to play, I might have to listen to the timbales because there might not actually be anyone playing the clave. That might be my only real... Blue. I mean, the, the rhythm in the congas might give it away, but that's a little trickier to hear. Um, so this and if is you're probably playing the... the wrong, if you're playing 3-2 on a 2-3, that's going to be just immediately evident to a Cuban musician. Clave police will be at your house immediately. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Um, I've been in uh, rehearsals and jam sessions where everyone was yelling at each other because everyone was fighting <laughs> about the uh, which direction the clave was really? supposed to be. <laughs> That's the, uh, you know, I'm half joking here. All my Cuban friends, don't hate me, please. <laughs> um, okay, cool. What's the next best thing to do? Is the next thing to show, show me the 3-2 and how that's Yeah, okay. let's take the same chords now and as simply as possible in terms of uh, just arpeggi, I'm not going to do any arpeggiating, any uh -huh. passing tones, anything like that. So... So back to that that other rhythm that I kind of learned. Da do da do da da do da. So we have now we have an anticipation going into the three side, and the two side we're gonna have downbeats. So it would sound something like this. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> I 
I said I wasn't going to do anything fancy, and then I da, 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 can't help myself. Da. It wasn't that fancy, but a few little <laughs> no, variations. Da, 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 da. So, is it fair to say, one thing that I'm noticing here, is that the three side of that clave is all off beats in both yes. the two, three, and the three, two. Is that one exactly. thing that will help you recognize the three, two? So, um, let's just say that theoretically we took the rhythm from the two, three, and flipped the two bars. You know, it's, it won't sound terrible. It's pretty much the same thing, really. We're just stylizing it a little bit, you know? Right. Did I, did I write this okay? Can you see? Da, do, da, do, da. Yeah, da, do, da, do, da, da, do, da, da, yep. Yeah, all right, let me, let me try it. So, here's three, two. There's the probably a lag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so compare that, then I'm just just doing this for myself and for anybody watching. The two three is as okay. They really do feel different. I'm, I can hear it now that I kind of have it all laid out in front of me. So if we're just listening. Would one way to tell two, three, or three, two be to listen to the Montuno of the pianist and figure out which measure has all the offbeats? Absolutely. Okay. Now, that does get confusing. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but <laughs> there's on. a folk rhythm called, there's a folk music from Cuba called Chang, Changi. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. And at one point when I was trying to get to the next level with my Montunos, the bassist John Benitez recommended I start listening to that music because a lot of more modern Montunos have been influenced by it and it's all off beats. So it's very, okay. very confusing. Can you just play it just so, so we can hear how it sounds? Yeah, so it's it's played by an instrument called the trace. It's like a guitar type instrument. Um, dum -bum -bum -bum. So if I was going to use, a, I'll use a progression like um, uh, because it just like it feels like the offbeats feel a little bit different than offbeats that I'm used to if that makes any sense like I could I could notate the rhythm I understand that rhythm but I don't think if I played it it would feel at all like you're like it feels when you play it and you probably look at the Cuban like actual Cuban people you're probably like oh it doesn't feel like you know um, there's a different feeling to it am, am I crazy not at all and you know that's something I always come back to as an educator in any kind of music that I'm or just as a perform as a player myself, you can uh, theorize all you want. Yeah, I don't consider myself an expert because I probably haven't done enough of my homework in terms of learning the history and blah 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 and all actually understanding it. But what I have done as as much as I can is is try to listen and immerse myself around the music, and it's like learning a language. I always compare it to that because you can learn a language without actually knowing the rules, right? We all learned mm. to speak our native language growing up just by listening to it and being immersed in it. We didn't learn it the way that you learn a language in high school where you start off with the basics and learn grammar. I mean, of course, it helps to know grammar to understand what you're doing. But this music, it, it comes or any kind of music, it comes down to immersing yourself in it and listening to it. And that's the true way to learn it is is by actually being able to feel it because you can't notate certain subtle characteristics right. of the yeah. groove, you know? Yeah, totally. Um, good. This feels like a place we could leave it, but I'm curious if you have some next steps. Um, you know, where would you go from here? Are, are there a couple other things that we should know before we leave it here? I'm just going to say this. If you listen to timba music from Cuba, mm -hmm. One of the earliest groups doing that was, um, well, even before that was the Songo movement, Los Van Van. And then we had groups like NH La Banda. And then now there's, there's modern groups in Cuba. Uh, the 
the Montunos really get out of control and in a good way. And I'm still trying to learn myself how to how to really do that. But we could take one of these rhythms and as soon as you start adding chromaticisms and contrary motion and more arpeggiations, you're still kind of have that same underlying rhythm, but you can really start taking them pretty far. So if I'll, I'll just do a little quick demonstration just just yeah, for please. fun. I wouldn't expect anyone to fully it, it takes a long time and it took me many years to even start grasping this and I'm still very much learning. But if you check out a guy like Axel Tosca, he's a great player. Um, Melone, he was one of the greats, did a lot of the stuff with Isaac Delgado. Um, Alain Perez is a bassist and vocalist and percussionist, but he was a big part of that movement as well. But if I just take, let's say, the same harmonic uh, movement, C minor to G, I'm going to try to do something with the three, with the first, with the two, three. So one, okay. two, one, two, three, four. I'm still hitting those downbeats in the same places, but I'm adding a lot of other rhythms. Now, if I was going to do something over the three, two, um, one, two. Uh, uh, uh. I kind of messed that up actually, but uh, try one more time. Something like that. So Ooh, that's cool. You know, I love that. I don't do as much as of these of this these days, but to really get good, you have to play like with a salsa band, and that's when I was really learning this stuff. I had a weekly gig at this Cuban restaurant in New York, getting uh -huh. my butt kicked every yeah. night by uh, like I mentioned John Benitez, but every every set I was I was listening, I was transcribing all these different pianists, trying to learn all these tunes, and then every set I'd be like, I knew it wasn't quite right. I knew I had. Mm -hmm what I wanted it to sound like, and it just wasn't sounding like that. And John would take me aside and be like, man, it's not happening. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but he kept, uh, you know, I kept- He got tired of you, I guess. <laughs> so. um, wait, I, I do have a couple more questions, and, and yeah. you know, maybe these are short ones. I guess the first one is, how much variation is really necessary in a Montuno? Like, if, if someone showed up to their Cuban salsa gig and just played this all night, would everybody be like, oh, this is the pianist is so boring? Or would they be like, killing? We don't need anything else. We just need this to group. Well, there's two parts to that question. So okay. if you just play that Montuno the whole time, that would be kind of like if you just played the Charleston rhythm the entire time on okay. a swing gig. So like that's one of the what that's one of the things I was being gotten after about is that like, mm. oh, your Montunos, they sound good for salsa but mm -hmm. like you need to get to the next level level rhythmically and um now having said that i think there's a tendency now and sometimes i've been guilty of it myself too but always we're always trying to impress people be flashy this is groove music this is dance music so it's important number one to groove it's not important to be fancy it's better to be simple and groove than anything else. Mm -hmm. And if you're constantly changing your variations, is the point of this to show off your Montuno skills? No, the point of this is to accompany a singer, to accompany dancers. So the most important thing is that you groove. Um, and yeah, you don't want to be changing, changing all the time. But mm -hmm. it's somewhere in the middle, you know, like everything. Got it. Okay. Um... And then I guess my second question is, maybe this is a dumb question, but I'm going to, I'm going to ask it. There are no so, dumb questions. <laughs> I, do you think playing Montuno's over standards, you know, if I were like, I want to play the days of wine and roses as a sauce, you know, in an Afro-Cuban feel, is it doable, dumb, like, uh, you know, obviously that's not really in that, in that tradition harmonically. But 
like it is possible to play Montunos over any kind of progression, do you think? Or is it really best for certain kinds of progressions? I spent many years doing that kind of thing. And as I've gotten older, I really try to limit my Montunos unless I'm on okay. a salsa gig because I think it can be overdone. I mean, I think more than anything, it's just like, how do I say this nicely? I mean, <laughs> you could play a gig. Some, I've played many Latin jazz gigs where we just call jazz standards and play oh. those tunes in, in an Afro-Cuban rhythm. So you could totally, don't ding, tch, 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 dun, dun, dun. Now one important thing to think about if you're doing that is how to phrase the melody so that it fits with the clave and the cascara. Mm. But I, I'd say more than anything else, I just wouldn't want to play a montuno most of the time if I'm comping for someone. I see. Now, maybe it gets to an intense part of the solo and then you go into it for a chorus. But I think it's a little lame if you just kind of play a montuno the entire time. You know, I think it's I think you should reserve it for special occasions. How about that? Like a glissando. Maybe not mm, quite uh -huh. like that because it is an important fundamental part of this music. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't want to go to a, a gig, especially if it's more of a jazz context. If it's salsa, it's very different. But if you're just playing jazz standards, I probably would try to avoid playing a Montuno the entire time. Got it. So maybe comp more in terms of like what you were demonstrating with comping like around the Cascara rhythm with chords rather than actually playing a Montuno most of the time. Right. If we're going one, two, one, two, three. something to reserve for those very special moments <laughs> and to mix in other kinds of comping um is that i'll just say this i'll just say i'll this just goes to more of my general approach about music mm -hmm. don't get into autopilot no matter mm -hmm. what you're doing don't get into a situation where you're just playing standards on a straight ahead gig and everything sounds the same and uh, a lot of latin jazz gigs quote if we want to use that term have fallen into that for me over the years mm -hmm. where every song or every tune that we play we just play a standard with nothing really particularly interesting happening we just put a, a groove and they all end up sounding the same and then you go into a montuno for the mm -hmm. conga <laughs> solo and i just think anything where you do the same thing follow the same formula all the time just gets old that's all yeah amazing any, any last thoughts before we sign off? I'll say one final thought. People often say, they say, well, what style do you want to play this? Oh, let's play it Latin. Mm. What does that mean? How many countries are there in South America and the Caribbean that all have their own unique and extremely diverse musical culture? I mean, just Brazil alone, which is, I think, the size of the continental U.S., probably has hundreds, if not thousands, of its own rhythms just that one country. And then, you know, often we don't respect the music enough to even learn a tiny bit about it. There's a difference between an Afro-Cuban rhythm and a bossa nova, right? It's, it's two different things. And so many jazz musicians are guilty of thinking it's just one rhythm. But it's important to realize each one of these countries has its own diverse musical world and you know, we can take a little bit of time to learn about how do I play appropriately in an Afro-Cuban context. And again, that one country, there's so many different rhythms or Brazil or all these different places, Uruguay, Argentina, the tango. It does have something to do with Afro-Cuban music because it has some of the same roots, but we, we don't approach it. We don't play a Montuno over a tango. We don't play a Montuno over a samba, unless you're Chick Corea, you can kind of get away with it a little bit. <laughs> um, well, I guess, yeah, thank you, because you've opened a little bit of a door uh, for me, and I'm sure for everybody watching, too, to explore this particular tradition a little bit. So I'm, I'm really grateful. It's, it's so fun for me to 
try to dive in and ask these questions that I've been wondering for a while. So, so thank you so much, Alex. Really appreciate it. Well, Jeremy, time. thanks. Thanks so much for having me. This was so yeah. much fun. We'll have to do more for sure. And is there an Alex Brown music.com or something like that, that we could find you at? Is that There's, actually it? Absolutely. Alex Brown music.com. And you can follow me on Instagram also at Alex Brown music. I have a YouTube channel, nothing like Jeremy's, but I post videos that I find fun at the time. And you know, sometimes a couple hundred people watch them. So that's good, man. It's a start. Well, th you know? Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jeremy.